Today, we all have a dream. Um, I do have a dream. Today, I'm going to talk about what it takes to be living my dream. It's an extremely audacious and a crazy dream that I'm pursuing right now. It's about going beyond the stars. It's about making history. My name is Anant Ramesh. I'm part of the Structures team of Team Indus. And I'm going to share the dream of my dreamers and myself. So, okay. The moon. The moon is the brightest object in the night. Man has ever been passionate about the moon ever since we walked. We always wanted to pursue the moon in an intent to explore new worlds. And, uh, this, this, this intent has uh, come out in modern history, wherein uh, we all remember the iconic words from Apollo 11: "One small step for mankind, a giant. One small step for man, a giant leap for mankind." I'm quite uh, fascinated by the fact that uh, an astronaut tells that, and uh, I can successfully tell that we are going to be the first private individuals to ever set forth on the moon. That's right. We are going to be the first private individuals and we are going to set forth on the moon. And Team Indus is going to do that. <laughs> Alright, so what do we do at, uh, what do we do at Team Indus? Uh, Team Indus is a next generation aerospace startup. Uh, we believe in pushing the frontiers. And uh, why are we doing this? The reason why we are doing this is because we want to put the Indian tricolor on the moon and win the Google Lunar X Prize. And what is the Google Lunar X Prize? Now, the Google Lunar X Prize is basically a foundation which is challenging all of the private entities to come up, send a rover on a spacecraft to the moon, traverse 500 meters, and bring back HD imagery. So, how did this all start? So, um, there were 32 competitors. The Google Lunar Express started off and 32 people came in and now approximately about 18 uh, competitors are now there uh, in the race. It just happens to be that Team Indus is the only entrant from India. All right. Why is it such a big deal to go to the moon? Uh, when I ask a question as to how many countries have gone to the moon, uh, the, the, the average response is like probably seven countries, probably eight countries. But in reality, there are only three superpowers that have ever gone to the moon. First is the USA, second is Russia, and third is China. So it's quite tough to get ourselves to the moon. Now, when all of these complexities come into the picture, it's quite tough uh, as to how we go about achieving our goals. Let me tell you what I have been doing. So, I'm, I'm very, very fascinated with space. And uh, I have a huge passion for space and henceforth pursued my career in space structures. Uh, this is me when I was the contingent commander for Tamil Nadu, a Republic Day Parade. And when I knew about a team that is going to put the tricolor on the moon, I thought this was my calling. This is where I have to be. So let me tell you what we've been doing at Team Indus. So here's the complex picture of what's happening in Team Indus. So firstly, uh, our spacecraft is 600 kgs. Uh, it's perched on top of the PSLV. Uh, it, the PSLV takes us into a highly elliptical orbit. And uh, what happens is that we go through the Earth slowly, one by one, one by one, raising our, raising our maneuvers. And then one final, the third burn, is the, it's called the translunar injection which will take us to the moon. And then we circularize around the moon, we park around the moon for some time. Some about 20, 25, that keeps changing. And the moment the lighting conditions in the moon is right, we, re we enter into an altitude of 12.3 kilometers. And right when we are there, we start our terminal descent. And the whole point of all of this is all about ri mitigating risk. So we need to conduct a lot of tests to ensure that what we are doing is going to happen. Uh, analysis, tests, uh, uh, theoretical calculations are all fine but uh, it needs to be proven. So this is our spacecraft that you're seeing. Uh, this is positioned on top of the vibration shaker table. Uh, this is what we call this as a sign vibration test. Uh, the shaker table subjects jolts our spacecraft to more than 25 Gs and uh, the full test takes about, uh, 20, uh, it takes about two minutes. And uh, 
during the food process it's, it's a full chattering noise and uh, your heart keeps on thumping and the moment the test is finished and uh, we have successfully tested our spacecraft to fly on top of the PSLV. This is qualified to the moon. <coughs> the next thing, now if it's qualified to go to the moon, can it land on the moon? Uh, one most important parameter for us to land on the moon is to drop from an altitude of 5 meters. Uh, we have dropped it on the earth which is 1 meter. Uh, the reason why we want to drop it from 5 meters is because there is extremely fine dust that is there in the moon and our thrusters should not kick up all of this dust and henceforth the dust would settle up on our solar panels that would result in emission failure. So at 5 meters in the moon, 1 meter on earth, we drop it, we dropped it and uh, it managed to survive. So the whole point is that now we have managed to prove that the spacecraft is capable of taking all the vibration and loads, the acceleration loads of the PSLV. Secondly, it's able to take the landing loads. Now, when all of this is happening, uh, the biggest question that people ask is, why are you going to the moon? Uh, there is a lot of poverty in India, there is a lot of things happening, Does it, is, it, is it really important to go to the moon? Uh, well. At Team Indus, we think it is very important. We need to push the boundaries of what we are doing. And let me give you a comprehensive detailing of why I think so. So let me just take you from the start. A uh, couple of team members uh, of Team Indus, they decided to take up a challenge, take up an initiative to bring up the biggest ever space movement. And that's when Team Indus was born. Team Indus was born in uh, March 2011. And from there on, we moved, uh, we protested on our design and in 2014 what we did is that we built our spacecraft from scratch and uh, we vibration tested and we dropped, the, we dropped it on there and the Google judges, uh, the judges from the Google and the X Prize came over and they awarded us the top three and uh, with this in hand they have also awarded a prize money of one million dollars so thereby giving us the far necessary fuel take us to the next leap. Now what's so great about this is that the, the rest of the two teams are from US and this proves that an Indian team can play in the foreign, in the world domain and prove itself capable in sophisticated engineering. And I hope this will inspire all of our youth that it is possible for India to redefine what India can do. It's not always that we will always be thinking that uh, let's go to the US and that's where awesome things happen. It's going to happen here. The next thing is, why are we going to the moon? The question again arises. I still haven't answered that question. Firstly, there's, there's this question of poverty being there, and a lot of uh, inequality being there and you're sending something as a luxurious thing to go to the moon. How is it benefiting uh, our mankind? Firstly, these questions will be answered uh, by us to our investors. So unless and until we do something back in return, they are not going to accept this full mission going to the moon. But is that enough? I'd like to answer this twofold. Firstly is the soft impact. The one thing that would happen is that the moment we land on the moon, there is a new energized feeling. As, uh, there can be something that is impossible that can be done by a private entity. The second thing that can be done the second thing, uh, which is the second part of my answer, is with regard to the technical field. Uh, what is the technical advantage that arises from going to the moon? The analogy that I'd like to give you is with regard to Formula One. Uh, Formula One is as useful to the automobile industry as much as we'll be sending our spacecraft to the moon. So the engineers in the Formula, Formula One, they will be testing the wheels to give maximum performance, they'll be testing the composite structures to give maximum performance, they'll be testing their transmission to give maximum performance, they'll be testing their engine to give maximum performance, all without refueling. So when they start pushing the frontier, those technologies start trickling down to our cars. And henceforth, that will supply to our technology. Now similarly, in Team Indus, since we have to go as long as to go to the moon, we have to have our structures extremely light. And what we've been doing is that we have reduced our structural weight as low as 9%. Now, how does this matter? Uh, I'd like to get some statistics and comparisons. Yeah, that's the, that's a question that uh, everyone would ask. So, we have done a survey and it's, it shows that if one was to send a satellite around the Earth, uh, the best possible ratio for payload to total mass was 45%. 
Now, since we have gained this technology to make extremely lightweight structures, keep on improving, questioning the existing designs, now we are able to give a 55% advantage. So thereby giving a competitive edge for our own design for satellite bus. So Team Indus is venturing into satellite bus and also high altitude platforms. Let's all remind ourselves that we are a group of entrepreneurs and uh, explorers. I'd like to quote uh, the biggest ever space buff, uh, Carl Sagan. So we are wanderers and we are wanderers still. We have long enough lingered in the shores of cosmic ocean and we are now ready to go to the moon and the stars beyond. So, what is a moonshot? A moonshot is something that's extremely audacious. It has a lot of risk associated with it. It just happens to be that our moonshot happens to be the moon. I request you all to believe in your dreams. If you can look up, you can stand up and you can live up to your dreams. Even, even if it is to go to the moon. Thank you.